One of the most common work requests pertaining to electronic differential pressure and pressure transmitters is to change the range. A range change automatically denotes calibration. The calibration may be done in the field or it may be done in the shop. We have previously categorized electronic transmitters by operating design. For example, motion balance, force balance, and strain gauge. For this lesson, we will select a motion balance model. A force balance model. and a strain gauge model. We will change the range and calibrate each type. Most of the techniques applied to changing the range of these samples can be applied to any manufacturer's models. Our first calibrations will be done in the shop. assume we have a work request to change the range of this Foxborough E13DM differential pressure transmitter from 0 to 50 inches to 0 to 150 inches of water. The output range is 10 to 50 milliamps. We have previously learned that there are two range capsules for the E13DM. One is stamped 205 and can be calibrated from a minimum of 0 to 20 to a maximum of 0 to 205 inches of water. The other is stamped 850 and can be calibrated from a minimum of 0 to 200 to a maximum of 0 to 850 inches of water. The present range of our transmitter is 0 to 50 inches. Therefore, the present capsule is suitable for the 0 to 150 inches. In addition to the capsule, the span link arrangement must be correct for a given range. For a given capsule, the spans in inches of water differential pressure are classified as low, medium, or high. From Table 2 in the E13 instruction manual, we can identify the spans for the various capsules. The table gives this information in regard to the 205-inch capsule for the E13DM. So what link arrangement is required for our 150-inch range? One hundred fifty inches is in the high span section. These diagrams show the proper link arrangement for a given span classification. This link arrangement is for a median span. We will rearrange them for our required high span. We now have them set for the high span. To proceed with the calibration, connect a variable pressure source to the high side of the transmitter. Here we are using a pneumatic calibrator. The low side of the transmitter must be vented.
connect the Foxborough 8121 or equivalent calibrator to the transmitter. Set it for calibrating a 10 to 50 milliamp force balance transmitter. The transmitter is connected to the output terminals. The resistance is set to 300 ohms. The current adjust is fully clockwise. And the function selector is set to 10 to 50 milliamps out. If you later need a review on the use of the Foxborough 8121 calibrator, read instruction number 18476 or repeat segment 2.22.3. Two With no calibrating pressure applied to the high side of the transmitter, Adjust the transmitter zero until the milliameter reads 10 milliamps. For greater accuracy, use the null meter. Next, apply 150 inches of water pressure to the high side of the transmitter. Then adjust the span to where the milliameter reads 50 milliamps. Repeat the zero adjustment and the span adjustments until the 0 to 150 inch calibration is correct. Intermediate outputs should be checked to determine that the input versus the output of the transmitter is linear. With 37.5 inches input, the output should be 20 milliamps. With 75 inches input, the output should be 30 milliamps. One hundred twelve point five inches input should give 40 milliamps output. And maximum or 150 inches input gives 50 milliamps output. The transmitter is now shop calibrated to zero to 150 inches of water. It's a good idea to tag the transmitter with the new range. Now work exercise number six in your workbook. Next, we will change the range of our same transmitter to 0 to 400 inches of water pressure. We know that the maximum span for the low-range capsule is 205 inches, and that the minimum span for the high-range capsule is 200 inches. Therefore, we must install the high-range capsule in the transmitter in order to calibrate to 0 to 400 inches. It is a job that should be done in the shop. If a transmitter is mounted, 
Remove the two mounting bolts on the high pressure side. Remove the quarter inch plug in the high pressure process connection. Remove the bottom plug. With a quarter inch Allen hex wrench, loosen, but do not remove, the flexure lock nut. Remove the four body nuts. And remove the high pressure cover. Do not remove the body bolts. Remove the capsule while being careful not to bend the flexure. Install new gaskets on each side of the capsule. Note the index marks here in the cell body. And the index mark on the capsule. Install the capsule so that the flexure fits correctly on the force bar. This figure shows the correct assembly. Align the capsule so that the index marks on it match those on the cell body. Tighten the flexure lock nut with the Allen wrench. Replace the high pressure cover and tighten the four nuts finger tight. Now loosen the flexure lock nut. And then tighten the four body nuts evenly to 50 pounds torque. Reinstall the mounting bracket bolts. and the quarter inch plug. Now work exercise number seven in your workbook.